We do not want colonialism in black faith. We do not want oppression in black faith. We do not want capitalism in black faith. We don't want the exploitation of the world in black faith. We don't want that. And the Black and Black Coalition came into formation with the election of Barack Hussein Obama. And the leaders of it had the vision to see that we need a coalition right now to stand up and say, oh hell no, we're not going to let you put a black face, a black name over your imperialist designs. And when we look at what happened, AFRICOM has now been built up all over the African continent. And who do you think delivered that? That happened under Barack Hussein Obama. But regardless, we got work to do now. It doesn't matter who the hell sits at the helm of the damn White House. It don't matter who the hell sits at, who sits at the helm of it. I don't care what you call yourself. It is about the oppression and the exploitation and endless wars. Endless wars. Is that what any of you want? Is that what any of is that what any of us want or need? I saw I was checking oil prices, phone heating oil prices. Because we know the winter months are upon us. And while gas prices are very important in terms of what goes inside of cars, but there are people who heat their homes still with oil heat. And oil is now $5.47 a gallon to heat your home. On average, it costs about, takes about 200 gallons per month to heat a house. On average, that's what you're gonna pay. I mean, that's what you're gonna need, at least even more than that. Because I know in our home, we were needing at least 300 gallons a month to heat it. Five gallons, five dollars a gallon! That means a thousand dollars, over a thousand dollars to heat your home. That is strangling prices. Those are prices that will kill people. Those are prices that are going to freeze people to death. Those are prices that are going to make you decide whether you can afford to pay your rent or your mortgage, or whether you can afford to heat up maybe one room of your home. That has never been that high. And let me tell you, after they invaded the after they invaded Iraq, oil prices quadrupled. It went from maybe being under a dollar a gallon to four dollars a gallon but now it's at five dollars a gallon over five dollars a gallon tell me how things are getting better you have a democrat in office how the hell are things getting better at the tipping point of nuclear war never since 19 have they talked the way that they're talking now about the possibility of nuclear war? About the possibility of nuclear war? That is where we are! And yet, within that, within all that is going on internationally, they are always coming after black people domestically, black, brown, and indigenous communities domestically. Always! That has never stopped. But we say, hell to the no! We say, no mas! And November 5th, November 5th, we are going to Washington, D.C. March on the White House. But we are about more than just marching. But we need those numbers! We need a critical mass of people because the numbers do give a message. We got to take every means available. We need those numbers. We need those numbers. Go to 
www.blackisbackcoalition.org and also go to handofthewuru.org. Those numbers are so important. I see some more comments coming here. Your voices are so appreciated, so necessary. We've been working. We've been working. We were working before the attack. We upped it even more, even more since the attack. And we're giving a strong message. We wanted to stand in front of this federal building today and tell you out your damn mind and say you we will not back down. You do not scare us. We will not be afraid. We will only grow stronger. So, we thank you so much. And would anybody else for right now want to say anything? A couple words from the clip. I see some comrades from the People's Organization for Progress. Please, open mic. You all are the comrades. You know what to say. Hello, people. Great. I am very happy to be out here today to support Lisa and her endeavor to wake up people. You cannot just be sitting around talking, small talk, watching your TVs. You gotta put them TVs down, put them telephones down. You've got to get involved. Right. Things are changing too quickly, too fast for you to just sit by. They're not getting any better. They're getting worse all the time. You look around and say, hey man, well, how did that happen? When did that happen? Well, it happened when you were looking at that TV, when you were on that telephone, when you're out there talking that small talk, which doesn't really amount to anything. We black people are in a worse state now than we have ever been. And if we don't really get together, unite together, work together, it will only get worse. You think it's bad now? As the folks say, you ain't seen nothing yet. So I implore you, I beg you, to get involved in something that will involve the promoting of equality for black people in this world, around the whole universe for that matter. We are not to be dismissed. We are to be taken seriously. But in order to be taken seriously, we have to get involved. Not sitting around talking that small talk. Please, people, please, pretty please. Put down them TVs. Put down them telephones. Get involved. If you want some change to happen, it's not going to happen by you thinking about it, by you talking about it. It's time to do something, do something smart. Those people who are working against you, they are working 24-7. They are not taking time out to sleep. They are taking time out to plan. And their plans do not include anything that's going to make you a happier person. It's going to make you more miserable. They want to make your life miserable. Because those people are miserable. They have no empathy. They have no caring for humankind. They care about themselves only. They care about that white supremacy thing. So we have to be aware of these things. We just can't go willy-nilly about it. We have to be very serious about these things. So I implore you people, all you black people out there, you people riding by in your cars, Take time out to look and see what's going on in your world. The Republicans, the Democrats, anybody, the independents, we must get on their case. We gotta stay on their case because they're on our case. They're trying to bring us down. They wanna keep us down. They wanna have anything that bounce to what they have. So we have to work to make sure we get our due. We will not get our due unless we put some effort in, into it. It's not an effortless deal. The struggle has been going on since the beginning of time. Black people have been in that struggle since we have been in, on this continent, before we were on this continent. We've been in this struggle for equal opportunity, equal share of what the American dream is supposed to be about. It has not been an, an American dream for any black people. All those people who so-called made it, they 
are part of the system. They are not giving anything really back to what will make lives better. Black lives matter. Black lives matter more and more each day because people black are being killed each day for no apparently good reason. No reason at all. Just because they are black people. That should not be the case. This is America. America, the land of the great. That's a bunch of you know what. You know that is something you, ah, that there's not enough toilet paper in the world to take care of it. Anyway, black people, rise up. Get involved. Do something positive for you and your other black people. We have to work together. Thank you. An attack on African People's Socialist Party is the same as an attack on People's Organization for Progress. On New Jersey anti-war movement. On peace action. On all the organizations. Because we are one struggle. That doesn't mean we agree on every little point, but that don't matter. If you take, if you don't get each other's back, none of us here has the exact opinion to everyone else, okay? But when they're attacking your movement, if you don't come up and let them know you're going to attack back, that means they're going to escalate these attacks. And right here, federal building, federal government, they raided the home of Omar Yesitela. They handcuffed him for nothing. Then they found out that they got no real evidence. It was just another Russia conspiracy theory. Russia this and Russia that. And what that is trying to say, and what that is trying to do, is trying to teach us that anything you say, we're going to accuse you of Russia. So people are going to be afraid to say because nobody wants to be accused of Russia. Okay? And also what it's saying, it's discrediting what we have to say. It's an overwhelming discreditation of our struggle to say that it's Russia inspired. Because nobody needs Russia to tell us what's going on right now with the whole wide world at the precipice of nuclear war. And trillions of dollars being spent to push the world to nuclear war while our cities are suffering. While Wall Street is buying up all of our properties because they intend to drive up the cost of purchasing and the cost of rent. And there will be a, a pressure on the whole working class to be willing to work harder for less because everyone is going to be in fear of homelessness. That money that's being spent to murder the planet needs to be brought home. Housing should not be an issue. Food should not be an issue. Medical care should not be an issue. Clean air should not be an issue. Clean water should not be an issue. Disaster relief should not be an issue. A government that cares for the people provides all of these things. But this government, if it does anything to any effect on any of these things, it has a thousand capitalist hands in the pocket. It has money laundering and rewarded contracts for political connection and cronyism. Anything that this government does for the people is totally, thoroughly corrupt. But we are spending trillions to murder the planet. Now we need to have some more voices come forward. Madeline, are you up for a couple words? I am glad to be here at this rally. Um, anti-war rally and rally to protect our human and civil rights. My name is Madeline Hoffman. I'm a longtime activist in New Jersey around issues of environmental protection and also around peace. Uh, for 20 years, director of a peace organization. 
I'm no longer part of that organization, but I'm still working for peace. And um, one part of that work is my connection with the people of Colombia. And my friend Jimmy, who's here from Colombia, he's going to say a few words after I do. Um, because all of our struggles are interconnected. What happens here in the United States impacts all of the world, whether we are talking about Ukraine, whether we're talking about Syria, whether we're talking about Libya, whether we're talking about Yemen, whether we're talking about Colombia, Bolivia, Brazil, the whole of Latin America. And I'm here today for two or three, all the reasons, all the reasons behind this rally. One, the raid on Uhuru is totally unacceptable under, um, for any reason, any reason, but the reason that was given makes it even worse, and that is that the people of the, that organization didn't come out and condemn Vladimir Putin for what he's doing in Ukraine. They didn't come out strongly in support of the State Department of the United States position that what has to happen in Ukraine is exactly what we're doing, sending weapons there and supporting a government that really isn't isn't a democracy, doesn't want to be a democracy, has people from uh, the Nazi, Nazi party in, in charge. We don't know where our weapons are going. We don't know who's using them. And now, you know, we're, all we want to do is escalate that situation by sending more and more weapons. And I'm going to say this, it might get me in trouble because I've been a candidate with the Green Party and I am a member of the Green Party and I'm still working for peace within the Green Party. The person who was our candidate for president in 2020 is behind and supporting vocally, vociferously, the sale of more weapons, the more weapons to Ukraine. Yeah, he says, oh, self-determination. We have to let the people of Ukraine determine their own destiny. That is a lot of, you know what, I think you said those words before I did. Um, you know what you could do with the paper, you know, you know what you could do with the paper that's printed on. Um, we have to stop sending weapons to Ukraine. We have to stop saying that we're supporting the right of Ukrainians to determine their own destiny because that's not what we're doing. The U.S. has intervened in Ukraine for the past, at least the past eight years and decided who the leadership would be. So we don't give a you-know-what about the, the self-determination of Ukraine. We just don't. So that, those two things go hand in hand. Don't raid Uhuru, and don't raid, as Bob, as Bob said before me, don't attack people who don't hold the same position as you, especially when the position you hold as the State Department of the United States has been shown to be totally unconcerned about the people and the places we attack, totally unconcerned about democracy here, totally unconcerned about how much money it's going to take to f carry out this, uh, these actions. That money, those trillions of dollars, billions of dollars to Ukraine ne are needed right here at home. Right here at home for education, for the roads, for health care, for subsidizing rent. Oh my goodness, the rents in this, in this state alone are so high. Who can afford them? Nobody on a minimum wage salary. Oh, well, don't get me started on the minimum wage either. We haven't had a... At, at least, I think, from around 2009. So we're talking about 13 years, 14 years, without an increase in the minimum wage, while inflation is going up, while prices are going up, while we're spending billions on war. Billions! Billions on war. Um, trillions. Trillions, but I'm talking only about Ukraine. But yes, yeah, 800 billion, 800 billion, um, eight, no, 800 trillion, you're right. 
you know, it's, it's just out of control spending. And I, I say this, I'm going to turn the microphone over in a minute to my friend Jimmy there. But he's been, a, he's been a good sport, going everywhere with me um, in New Jersey the last two weeks. And we went to a county, to a place in Ocean County last weekend, uh, where a friend of mine is running for city council. That's Barry Bender's running for city council in Lacey Township. And Lacey Township has a member of the council who wants to tear down the old town hall building. The old town hall building, it's maybe from 1960, 1970, something like that, wants to tear it down, get a store there, because it's right on the main drag, and rebuild the town hall. And you know how much rebuilding the town hall is going to cost? $40 million to rebuild the town hall. And Jimmy, Jimmy, my friend here, is looking to relocate a school, a school in for campus, the children of campesinos to, re to relocate the school, how much do you think that's going to cost? $60,000. And here in this country, we want to spend $40 million to rebuild the building for government? You know, so let's ask for $60,000 that, for that school and $60,000 for another school keep the money in the communities where people need it. And uh, I will let Jimmy speak and I'm going to do my best to translate. Um, Jimmy will be coming up in a few seconds, but I just want to let people know we have QR codes on these signs. So as you're passing by, you with your camp phones and your cameras, because you know this better than I do, please take a picture of those QR codes. It'll take you to important websites to follow and to let you know what you can do to, uh, to be in this movement and to help out. Thank you. Yeah, and let me just add to that. You know, we need to rebuild the anti-war movement in this country, and we need to do it now. We need to do it before the nuclear bombs start dropping. And anybody who thinks adding more weapons into the area in Ukraine is going to bring peace to the world has really not been following history. And so I urge everybody to be, I hope that this is the beginning of a rebuilding of the, of the anti-war movement in New Jersey and anti-war movement around the world because uh, we need it and we need it badly. Bueno, muchísimas gracias por la invitación. Thank you very much for the invitation. Que me hace Madeline aquí a los Estados Unidos. I've been here with Madeline in the United States. Thank her for the invitation too. Vengo de uno de los pueblos más hermosos de Sudamérica y de Latinoamérica, llamado Colombia. He lives in one of the most beautiful towns in one of the most beautiful countries in Latin America. In Colombia, Cajamarca, Colombia. Un país que alberga comunidades indígenas, afro, afrocolombianos, eh, campesinos, raizales. A country with many communities of indigenous, of afrocolombianos, of campesinos, y raizales. Um, Un país que por más de 60 años ha estado sumido bajo el poder de la guerra, de las armas. A country that for the last 60 years or 70 years has had a civil war, uh, internal civil war, and a lot of that has been fueled by weapons from the United States and the military, military influence of the United States. Pero un país que dijo ya no más y le vamos a apostar a la paz Porque ya no queremos más líderes sociales asesinados por una guerra que no tiene sentido. Okay, so this country now has said no more. We don't want this anymore. We don't want any more fighting and violence here in our country for a civil war or a war that we don't believe in, that we don't, that we don't support. Lo mismo que pasa en Colombia, pasa en muchos países en el mundo. 
What's happening in Colombia has, uh, is also happening in many communities around the world. ¿Qué, qué sentido tiene de que nos matemos unos a otros para enriquecer en países? So the the, the uh, governments, outside governments or corporations are dividing one person for another, one group, one group of people from another in order to enrich themselves and to put money into their own pockets. Que sus, en sus países hay, se ejecuten guerras innecesarias. Levante la mano el que esté de acuerdo con que nos estemos matando. Si hay sentido o no tiene sentido. So he, he want, he's asking people, I think rhetorically, but not necessarily, if to raise their hands if they support what's going on in these countries and the continuation of war, the spending of money on war, I didn't, I forgot to translate from what he said earlier, it's not only the spending of money and it's not only, you know, the influence of the military, but in Colombia, social, community, environmental leaders are being, have been killed at the rates highest rates of anywhere in the world and so he's asking us to raise our hands if we support that no no, no. no. <laughs> i don't see any hands <laughs> el, el negro el blanco el indígena el raizal el colombiano el estadounidense todos tenemos el mismo color de sangre ah. en nuestras in nuestros cuerpos. So whether we're black or white or indigenous or raizal, on the outside, our blood is all red. Our, the color of our blood is all the same. And it needs to be valued the same. Wherever you, wherever we live, whoever we are. No diferencia el color de piel, pero todos vivimos en el mismo planeta. We all live in the same planet, no, no matter what our difference, other differences might be, we live on the same planet. Invito a los gobiernos, a los líderes del mundo, a que esa plata que tienen destinada para la guerra, la destinen para la producción de alimento, para que no mueran personas de hambre. So all the money that's now on track to be delivered to war and to the military should be redirected for for addressing hunger, for the production of food, so that nobody, nobody in the world should go should ever go hungry. Por mostrar quién es el más poderoso, si Rusia, si Estados Unidos, si Colombia o Venezuela, si Israel o Palestina, no tiene sentido la guerra. That's right. So we don't have the stomach for the belief in any more these wars to show who's got the most power, and Russia or the United States or or Colombia or Venezuela or Palestine, Palestinians or Israelis. This is not what living is about. This is not what we don't, we don't believe in this. We don't want this. Yo hago un balance en mi poco conocimiento de lo que está pasando en el mundo y veo que nosotros somos causantes en un 100% de lo que pasa y tendemos a, a desaparecer por todo lo que se acumula en nuestros territorios. No comprendo. Si hacemos un balance, uh, uh, there needs to be a balance. Sumamos las consecuencias with the consequences de lo que pasa en el planeta. 
Okay, the consequences of our actions on the planet with Todos nosotros tendemos a desaparecer. All of this, all of us, may disappear if we don't balance these right. Yes. Una posible guerra nuclear. A possible nuclear war. Desastres causados por la naturaleza. All of the natural disasters from climate change. El huracán Fiona aquí en Estados Unidos. Oh, with hurricane and the hurricanes like Hurricane Fiona or Hurricane Ian, the remnants of Hurricane Ian. Yeah, hurricanes in the United States, yes. Los terremotos, those er earthquakes. Y sumémosle el tema de la de la extracción de los materiales y minerales que hay en la tierra. This is a symbol of, or, or a symptom of, or a consequence of extra extracting minerals out of the earth. All of the, the extractive biz, uh, industries. Para enriquecer los bolsillos de unas pocas multinacionales to en Sudáfrica, en Estados Unidos, to enrich the pockets, line the pockets, I've got my hand in mine, <laughs> of the, the richest people in South Africa or in the United States or other countries. Y cada día más los pueblos sumidos en el abandono de los estados. And every day the people who have been abandoned by their governments termino diciendo stop speaking Enviando un mensaje a las nuevas generaciones. Uh, need to send and need to send a message to the future generation. Que tengan sentido de pertenencia. And it's necessary to belong to. Que nazcan nuevos líderes o nuevos pensamientos alternativos para liderar el mundo. I need to belong to, need to speak about, need to be part of a new movement of leaders in order to bring about the kinds of changes that people all over the world need. Esas personas que ya superan demasiada edad y que tienen un pensamiento acaparador, un, un pensamiento personalista, debe de ya dejar de existir, que den un paso al costado. So, I, I, if I didn't understand all of that, I apologize, but it's, it's important for people who have these thoughts and to think this way, to not stay asleep, not to lie down, not to, not to disappear, but to speak out, to speak out wherever they can and whenever they can, and this is one of those places. Estados Unidos con una población tan grande, tan grande, y no va a haber un líder que salga, que lo represente una nueva generación, una nueva fuerza. Es hora de que piensen de que sí se puede. Ok, so this country has got a very large population. Um, we need a new kind of leader. Um, the, the leaders that we have now are thinking in the old way. And... Um, yeah, we need we need a different leader. Si lo puedo hacer un campesino desde que cultiva la tierra desde un país tan lejano como Colombia, ¿por qué ustedes no lo pueden hacer? So maybe we need a campesino in the White House. Thank you so much. Maybe we need campesinos in positions of power to think about things in a different way, and we are all. Nosotros somos, no, todos nosotros somos campesinos. ¿eh? We're all campesinos. Yes, Porque campesino es el negro, el blanco, el raizal, el joven, el abuelo, todo aquel que hace que la tierra produzca alimento. And so the campesinos are black, white, indigenous, indigenous raizales, and they work the earth to produce the food, and this is 
for us all, for the uh, food production. Thank you very much. <laughs> Gracias. Gracias. Thank you so much. Um, yes, we are all, this earth, this world belongs equally to us all. And I just want to say a couple of things that we need to remember when they talk about the Americas, land that was colonized. They had identities long before this country or European colonizers invaded these territories and cursed it with the name America. And we have to remember that what goes on, it's so interesting to me how everybody only watches the southern border, an illegal border. These borders that were illegally constructed through uh, genocide and war. And we're supposed to go by that? No. So I just want to say we stand in solidarity with the people struggling on the southern border as well. You know, we're not going to allow ourselves to be divided. Let me just also say this real quickly. I was learning more about the brilliant history of the, um, of the young lords and the Black Panthers during the 70s. And they did things, they got together, they took over hospitals, implemented so much change. And so I was talking about that on TikTok, talking about how we needed to come together. We cannot let people divide us. We need to know about this beautiful, brilliant, revolutionary history and what they did when they got together. And how do you think TikTok responded to me? They suspended me, suspended my life, that I was lying and promoting violence and dangerous activity. I guess unity is dangerous. Anyway, we have quite a few people here who want to speak. Our next comrade, our next revolutionary is going to be Brother Shaka, Brother Sharad from the new chairman. Chairman, correct? That's your title. Chairman. I gladly call him chairman of the uh, new African Black Panther Party. Brother Sharad, I always get people's Facebook names mixed up with their actual names, so you got to bear with me. But, uh, our brother Africa. Said all power to the people. Man, that ain't good enough for me, man. I said all power to the people. I said all power to the people. Hey, boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. Hey, this ain't lively enough for me, man. Like, real talk. But we're gonna try this again. I said all power to the people. I said all power to the people. Hey, look, I watch a lot on the media, and people are always saying we have no coalition. There's no black and brown coalition. There's no this, there's no that, there's no new Malcolm, there's no new Martin. Hey, well, that's because you're not coming out of your house. That's because you're not going where the people are out there protesting. Hey, well, you see the people that are standing out here? These people left their house to come out here and stand for something they believe in. If you're not doing that, if you're not going in these spaces, you're not going to see them. Yo, two weeks ago, we went to Chicago for the new Rainbow Coalition. The same thing the sister was just talking about, about the um, land case and the vice lords working with the Panthers. Gotta go around, gotta go around, my boy. Yeah, hey, whoever doing security over here, you can't just let people walk through, man. Yeah, like that's political education. We gotta get it together. You can't let people walk through. They don't break the ranks. That's all part of what we're doing out here. But um, but yeah, we went out to Chicago and we went out there to form alliances with different groups in the struggle that's out here doing fighting the same fight we fighting. We can't be alone in our silos. We have to come out of our homes and come out and join people organizing to bring the liberation that we all seek. Yo, I see people out here walking, waiting for the bus. You're all catching hell too. We all catching hell. But you're not gonna beat these people alone. You gotta come out and join the struggle and join people fighting. I'm about to bring our chairman up here. But our chairman, what he teaches us, the political education that he lays out to us, there's no negotiation. You can't negotiate with these people. They're not going to fix your schools. They're not gonna pay you more money. They're not going to stop shooting and killing you. There's nothing to negotiate about. You want a reference? Go read Wretched of the Earth by Fanon. And then go read CLR James, the Black Jacobins. You're going to see that you cannot negotiate with these people. Either the first will be last or the last will be first. That's it. And what that means is building your own, building your own institutions in the communities, working together in the communities to build what
what you want, to bring about the reality you want. That is what we call, as Panthers, doing contending powers. You have to build those institutions in your community, economic institutions, educational institutions, medical institutions, and you don't have to beg white supremacy to do that. We can do it together. And everything I'm telling you, we learned this under the leadership of our chairman. Under the leadership of our chairman, we, we believe, we embrace this philosophy, the philosophy of pantherism, which is do it yourself. Stop begging people. These people will give you nothing. It is up to you to get with people that think alike and fight for the liberation you seek. Now, I'm about to introduce the chairman, and the chairman is going to lay it out better now that I just did. I said, I'm power to the people. I said, I'm power to the people. Get him, get him, chairman. All power to the people. All power to the people. Come on, brothers and sisters, we could do better than this. Especially since our brothers and sisters are catching hell everywhere, we can at least raise our voice in unison and solidarity with them. All power to the people. All power to the people. I want to first acknowledge the comrade that talked about Colombia, Venezuela and the unity that's needed across racial and ethnic lines, especially in the 21st century where we're dealing with an overt fascism all around the world. I don't care if you're in Europe or the United States. Fascism has consolidated its power, and that's the reason why we out here. We ain't out here because we look good. We ain't out here because we feel good. We out here because people are being evicted out of their houses as we speak. We out here because people are being knocked in the head with police brutality. We out here because this racist enemy government is continuing to funnel money to wars overseas in order to prop up the pockets of the 1%, the Jeff Bezos, the Warren Buffets, the murderers, the rulers. Che Guevara said, and I hope some of y'all comrades go back and read up on Che Guevara. He was a wonderful revolutionary. He left his hometown, Argentina, and went to Cuba and fight with Fidel for justice, to get rid of the compadors, to get rid of the landlords, to get rid of the ranchers that were exploiting the people. Che Guevara said, you show me a billionaire and I'll show you a thousand miles of misery that lay in his waist. You can't become a billionaire under capitalism without exploitation. You can't become a billionaire under capitalism without controlling the oil, without controlling the music industry, without controlling education. Everything in this society is a commodity. And so capitalism is our enemy. Racism is a byproduct of that. You are now here today because this enemy system has put us against one another, has divided us, got us hating Putin. We don't even know who Putin is. Some of y'all never even heard of a Russia's leader called President Putin, but you hate him because United States said hate him. The, the, the enemy telling you to cry for the warlord, but to sympathize, excuse me, to sympathize with the warlord, but to cry for the victim. No, we're going to cry for oppressed people in Africa. We're going to cry for oppressed people in the Caribbean. We're going to cry for oppressed people here in the United States. They are the victims of Americanism. They are the victims of white supremacy. They are the victims of a system that is, is determined, that is hell-bent on keeping African people. A system that is hell-bent on keeping African people, poor white people, poor Latino people at the bottom of society, at the bottom of the economic system. So we're here today, not because we want to get together and, and, and stop the police, even though we want to stop the racist pig. We're here today because we're the leaders we're looking for. You're the Che Guevara's, you're the Huey P. Nguyen's, the Malcolm X's, the Asana Shakur's. You're the new freedom fighters. We look back on these freedom fighters just to get an idea, just to get encouragement, to learn from their failures, to learn from their successes. But we take what we get ideologically and theoretically and put it into practice in the streets. So you see.
see us fighting against the police. We ain't doing that because we're super, super aggressive. We're doing it because we see the police as a continuation of the slave patrols. The police was constituted here in the United States to protect the interests of those in power, to keep black people in check, to keep the movement diffused, weakened, and at the behest of those in power. That's why you get these local times come to you and say, why you're not fighting in Ukraine? Or why you don't hate Fidel Castro? Or why you don't love President Biden? This is what these Uncle Toms tell you. Oh, we're going to stop Donald Trump from getting back in power. So vote Democratic. You hear what they say? They don't tell you that walls, institutions, were put together by the hands of people. And so they could be torn down by the hands of unified people. Everybody put their hands together like this. Ball your fist up. You see what you got there? It's closed. It's tight. No one can get in between that. Not even water can get in between that. But if you open your hands like this, the enemy will pass off against each other. The enemy will offer you money. The enemy will offer you a job. The enemy will put you on TV. The enemy will say, what do you want so you can get away from this movement? So we got to stay together. We got to stay unified. This is a serious fight. A serious fight. Not only have the FBI invaded Uhuru's property, they invaded my house as well. You ain't hear me crying. You ain't hear me complaining. This comes with revolution. It's a part of the struggle. You either going to die or you going to win. And we are determined right now to win, brothers and sisters. But we have to win strategically, intelligently. We have to be unified. We have to show the people at the top that they can't divide the poor white from the poor black. The poor black from the poor Latino. The poor Latino from the brother, the, 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 the South Asian brother. We can't let that happen. Those days are over with. In fact, Malcolm X said, we would be at the height of foolishness to allow a man we know is the enemy to divide us when we both have housing and interests. Right? We all want housing. Who own, who own housing? It's the oppressors at the top. So we got to be together to get some housing. Who own the food industry? It's Archer Daniel Midland. It's Kikita. It's these nasty Monsanto-based companies that are poisoning the food in order to extract more resources out of it so they can get a dollar bill. That's our enemy, all of our enemy. Who controls this building right here? This federal building. It's not me. It's not none of the brothers and sisters out here. It's those people in power that said 2.3 million people being locked up today is a justice kind of thing. What government they right now, brother, sister, will lock up 2.3 million people and call that justice. 2.3 million. 80,000 are sitting in ASAG right now across the country. 80,000 prisoners. So this struggle is serious. We ain't here to miss words. And we back up what we say, brothers and sisters. I just want to employ everyone to not get distracted by democratic poly politics, not midterm politics, don't vote for the lesser evil, don't be scared by Donald Trump. Let me tell you something. Donald Trump is no different from Richard Nixon. Donald Trump is no different from Eisenhower. Donald Trump is no different from Cleveland. Donald Trump is no different from Grant. And let me hurt some villains. Donald Trump is no different from Abraham Lincoln. Or President Biden. You know why? Because they all support the plantation economy. 
They all support war. They all support imperialism. They all support black and brown and white poor white people being at the bottom of this economic society. So what are we fighting for? What are we arguing? What are we arguing over? When we could tangibly look right up the street, right up the street from here, there's massive homelessness. There's brothers and sisters living on 15th Street, 17th Street, on the cusp of being evicted. And I know this may be cliche, brothers and sisters, but my comrades talked about it a lot. Africa talked about it on his podcast, and we talked about it in Chicago with other individuals. But it doesn't it hurt? Doesn't it hurt your feelings? And it sure hurts your feelings that 25% of our houses here in this city is owned by corporations. Shouldn't they hurt you? They telling, they telling you, brother, they telling you, sister, you will never own this home. That's what the LLC say in their charter. We use the rent from their poor brothers or their poor sister's house. We use the rent to pay our investors on Wall Street. That's what the LLC is saying. And if that's the case, if the oppressor is using the rent from our poor brothers and sisters to pay their investors on Wall Street, why should we have a problem taking their house? Why should we have a problem? All power to the people? Why should we have a problem taking the house when it's abandoned? Let's do it. Too many times we get caught up in legalities. Oh, brother, is that legal? Oh, brother, the man may throw you in prison. Oh, I may lose my doctorate job. I don't want to, I want my son or my daughter seeing me being put in handcuffs. Well, what you in the goddamn movement for? If you don't want to be put in handcuffs, that's what the enemy going to put you in. He ain't going to come to you and say, let's negotiate your way out of this situation. He going to say, my police want to lock you up, take you to court, and we want to deal with it like that. And that should be our position. We got brilliant minds out here. Why do we need to beg? to take a brother who is sleeping on the streets, a mother who with her kids on the cardboard boxes and not put him in the house. What are we afraid of? So brothers and sisters, it really come down to a question of being all the way revolutionary or being some way revolutionary. Now being some way revolutionary means you're gonna end up in a casket. Being some way revolutionary means you can easily be corrupted. Being some way revolutionary means they can easily play you off against one another. Because you're not fully committed. You're some way, you got your feet in. That's like saying, I'm a little bit pregnant. No, you got to be all the way pregnant or you ain't pregnant. You got to be all the way revolutionary or you ain't no revolutionary. You can't tell me I'm going to sit down and have a conversation with Michael Eric Dyson about the frailties of, uh, uh, of American electoral system and then at night go and tell the people in college we do a revolutionary work. No, brothers and sisters, feed somebody, hail somebody, stop the police from brutalizing somebody, stop the war machine, clog it up. Put our bodies on the line. Tell Biden the billions of dollars that is going to Ukraine is not only going to murder innocent people, but the Nazis are going to take that money, strip it themselves, consolidate their power, and blow up the building somewhere around the world and say, white power is here. They have done that before. You see it. I don't have to give you examples of white power around the world especially in Europe, murdering thousands of kids because they don't want immigrants. Catch that, catch this. We don't want the dark, the darkies to come into our land. We don't want immigrants to cross our border. But you crossed the motherfucking border in India in the 1800s. 
You crossed the border in Africa. You crossed the border in Latin America. You took half of the United States in 1812, excuse me, the 1848 from the Mexican people. What goddamn sense do we have listening to these people? They're murderers, butcherers, criminals. And we need to let them know we ain't playing with them. All power to the people. All power to the people. Thank you, Black and Black Coalition, for giving me this opportunity to speak. Revolution is not a tactic, it's a process. Let's get involved. Long live the world proletarian socialist revolution. Oh, thank you so much, and again, we thank you for the unity, because we got to give a message. No more. And God help pro, you ain't going to work no damn more. No more at all. And let me just say a few things about Ukraine, because that has come up a couple of times. Um, let's be clear about what Ukraine is. They got a large neo-Nazi population. Age of battalion. Neo-Nazi affiliations, and I'm not afraid to say it. And when I saw how African people were being treated by the Ukrainians, I knew I would never stand up on their side. And I, I don't like war. I didn't ask for this war. But also, the United States has been having forever wars and invading every damn country they possibly could invade. And if you think that other countries were going to sit by and let it continue to happen because most people in this country went to sleep on that and said nothing and continued to vote for pro-war candidates no matter what. And I know many of us feel that we were up against the wall. But in the meantime, this country was continuously invading other countries and it was only going to be a matter of time before a country like Russia stood up and said no more and they were provoked, they were pushed into that. They had people at their border. Neo-Nazis, by the way, neo-Nazis. So I want to be clear on who they are. And yet the United States government comes after Omalia Shatala based on one Russian person who said he was for anti-globalism. I don't even know much about him. And Omalia Shatala doesn't deny that he knows him. He doesn't deny that he went to Russia. And he also does not deny that the African People's Socialist Party took a stance and said they were against the United States and that Russia was in the right on this situation, which is your right to say that. But I want to be clear about Ukraine and their neo-Nazi affiliations. And I ain't got no love for nobody that has no love or respect for African people, or anybody really, but, <laughs> you know, anybody really, I ain't got to go for that. But you ain't going to come up in my face going to tell me that I'm supposed to ignore what the hell I see and be on the side of neo-Nazis. And let me just say this real quickly, because we need to understand this. All of these killings, these mass shootings, we are led to believe that, oh, they're just some low, disgruntled person. They leave violent online footprints, and many of them turn to blood for Ukraine, which was known, known for being the bastion of a rising neo-Nazi movement. That's all on the internet, ain't nothing secret about that. They were known for that. And many, while they were watching Amalia Shatella, one person was able to go up there in Buffalo and kill at least 10 people, black people, and he was talking about how he wanted to do that. Had a violent online footprint. Vivaldi, Texas. When those young kids were shot up. And nobody was even going inside that school. Oh yes, he had a violent online footprint as well. As well he had that. Showing all kinds of red flags and warning signs. The one who went in and shot those in Sandy Hook. In Sandy Hook. He too had a violent on 
lies, footprints, showing all kinds of warning signs, but no, 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 no. The FBI was watching the Uhuru movement. And, well, nothing, they couldn't get anything to go into that school when those young kids were being shot up. They got a, a, they, a drone was sent into Amalia Satella's house. So all you gotta ask, what kind of world do you want? What kind of world do you want anyway? The next person we're going to have come up, and if there's anybody else here who would like to speak, please let me know. Uh, but the next person that we're going to have come up is going to be Toba. I don't know your last name. I apologize for that. She's going to be talking about the current situation with me, Abu Jabal. Let me just say right here, right now, free all political prisoners, free every damn one of them. Um, Asada Shakur is welcome here. Free Mumia and another, another political prisoner, Dr. Matula Shakur, and I apologize, Lynn Peltier, and I apologize for the names I have not mentioned. I'm kind of bad with remembering names, but just know we got your back. And also, I just want to say one thing. I appreciate the brothers who are talking about security, and I just have to own this era. I'm thinking about everything else but security. So I just want to say I appreciate those who came around and said, you know, we need to watch out for this. It's appreciated. Thank you so much. And Tobo, please come up and give us some words about Mumia. Thank you very much for the Black is Back Coalition for putting together this important rally that not only talks about the war in Ukraine and why we shouldn't be in it, uh, but also uh, in solidarity with the Uhura movement and the attacks uh, on them by the FBI. Uh, but today I wanted to talk about um, Mumia Abu-Jamal. I've been working with the Love Not Fear Coalition centered in Philadelphia, which has been working very hard to make the next steps to get uh, Mumia out of jail, and uh, there's an important court date coming up that was originally scheduled for this coming Wednesday, October 19th, and POP, the People's Organization for Progress, which I'm also a member of, uh, had organized a bus and put money down on a bus to bring people from Newark uh, to that court date, and what does the court do? Because they know that people are mobilizing for October 19th, not only from Newark, but from New York City, from Detroit, from Boston, from a lot of other cities. They changed the court date just yesterday. They changed it to October 26th, uh, a week later, and it's simply a maneuver to um, disband our, and weaken our forces, and we won't stand for it. So what are we going to do? We're going to free Mumia Abu-Jamal. Free uh, Mumia Abu-Jamal. <laughs> Mumia Abu-Jamal. We're going to free Mumia Abu-Jamal. So what? Wall by wall, we're going to free Abu uh, brick by brick, wall by wall, we're going to free Mumia Abu-Jamal. But um, one thing, a big thing that I want to ask of you, and I know that just about everybody here uh, knows who Mumia is. Uh, Forty years, Mumia has been in prison as an innocent man. In 40 years, he has spoken out on the behalf of all the liberation movements and all the people and taken great risk on himself in doing so. But he's been a long-term spokesperson, a long-term revolutionary, and we need to stand up for Mumia. So I'm asking folks to um, come with us to Philadelphia on, now it's October 26th, and you can uh, reach out to Pop uh, on our Facebook page or uh, uh, Lawrence Ham on his Instagram page uh, or on, on Lawrence Ham's Twitter page. Reach out and say you want to ride the bus with us to Philadelphia, which has now been changed to October 26th. We need all of you to be there in person. Uh, for those of you do who don't know, this is his closest chance to getting a new trial in quite a few years. And there, there were six boxes of un uh, hidden uh, evidence and documents that were found in the basement of the DA's office a couple of years ago now. And it's finally coming to time that Mumia is going to get a hearing, and that's what this is all about, on possibly getting a new trial that could actually free him. 
So that's why this is such an important court date and we need everybody to be there. So once again, brick by brick, wall by wall, we're gonna free Mumia Abu Jamal. Brick by brick, wall by wall, we're gonna free Mumia Abu Jamal. And if, and if it's okay, I'd like to switch hats for just a second um, because I also work with an organization called al the Palestine Right to, uh, right to Return Coalition. And uh, al uh has been really uh, fighting uh, in, in a different way to get recognition uh, for not only the Palestinian right to return, but here we have Biden and the UN talking about we're not going to allow uh, a plebiscite uh, to take away land from somebody we're not going to allow uh, uh, the so-called uh, invasion by Russia to uh, uh, take away people's democratic right to their own homeland and it's while totally ignoring what's going on in Palestine. So in Palestine, every day, the uh, Zionist government is taking more and more land from the Palestinians and you hear a word from the Biden administration do you, you know, the UN has in the past passed some, uh, on the General Assembly level only, passed some uh, motions uh, siding with uh, some rights for the Palestinians, but nobody has stepped up like they're doing uh, supposedly for Ukraine, and nobody cares uh, about all the people that are being murdered, the children, the youth that are being murdered every day, the whole next generation of Palestinians is being murdered by these Zionist forces every day and they're taking the land and the UN has the nerve to say we won't allow another country to take another country's land. Well, what do you think is going on in Palestine? So, so um, anyway, I just uh, wanted to say that uh, the contradictions of how uh, this warmongering president of ours uh, acts with, um, with regards to Ukraine versus, you know, the, a struggle that's been going on. It's going to be 75 years this coming year since the Palestinian land was stolen by uh, the Zionists and not a word from, from war, warmongering uh, Biden about that. So I just want to say um, stop, stop U.S. imperialism, no more wars, uh, free the land, free them all. Brick by brick, wall by wall, we're gonna free Mumia, Abu Jamal, and we're gonna free all of them. We got Dr. Matula Shakur, who's very, very sick. And we got to free him as well. There is Leonard Peltier. And like I said, my apologies. I know that there are so many names, so many names. But also, mass incarceration, what's going on with this brutal prison industrial complex. And so many people locked up, and wrongfully so. But even some of them, because we know there are people who did some things they should not have done. But this is a brutal system that has no answers for nobody. For nobody. So um, I just wanted to let people know, the political prisoners, um, we're going to free all of you. We want all of you freed. I'm going to um, call up... Uh, Brother, uh, brother Nate, and then uh, Dave Hungerford next. Brother, brother Nat. Woo! Now, I call this m m man right here Nat Turner because that's who he reminds me of. Nat, my mind is I look at people's Facebook names and all this stuff, and I get all confused. But brother Nat right here, a, a warrior, a warrior in the in the spirit of Nat Turner. Thank you. Power to the people. Power to the people. We are the people. And we have to be heard. We have to be listened to. Talking about the Palestinians, talking about the... You know, I remember I was a kid. I was young when they, when they picked the Palestinians out of uh, Palestine. And they were supposed to be coming back. I remember this. See, how they was coming. They were leaving peacefully and everything, and they were supposed to, be able to come back to their home. But I don't 
this was out 60 years ago. Well, more than that, maybe. But I remember that. And I remember, <clears throat> I think, the, the, what happened to the, uh, in Israel, to the, in, in Germany, to the Jews. And I always say, it seemed like to me, they are doing the same thing to the Palestinians as if the Germans were doing to them. They were doing the same, they're doing the same thing to the Palestinians right today. It may not have no gas tank, but that's it. Anyway, I haven't been out here on this. I used to come out here every Friday, Monday. Down on Broad Market. Every Saturday. But I have, I'm kind of rusty. I ain't been out in a while. <laughs> but you all looking good out here and sounding good anyway. But the main thing is we got to stick together, people. We have to keep together. We have to organize. We have to organize and we have to get involved. You have to get involved. No more fake wars. Oh. <laughs> I forgot my signs up. No more fake wars. These, these phony wars. These wars are all about money. All about money. I was tricked into the Korean War. Tricked into it. <laughs> Come to my got treated better in Korea and Japan and I got treated in my own country. That's right. I could go to restaurants, read on the ride on the buses and things, no problem. Come out of Korea, crutches, this ain't my blue metros on four bronze stars, I mean combat infantry bad, all that stuff. Come home to my own country, can't ride on the front of a bus. This is 1950. Yes, sir. Couldn't ride on the front of a bus. When I came out of the hospital in Baltimore, two white kids, recruits, they picked me up, soldiers. They picked me up, they were gonna take me to New York. We were all going to New York. We stopped in a restaurant. They told this is right after we come out of Korea now. Stopped in the restaurant. People said, well, we gotta go around the back or something like that. And I start arguing, the guys start, the two kids start arguing with the man. So I just went out and got me another hitchhike. And I had, I was on crutches, had a brace on my leg. I'm just coming out of the hospital fighting for this country. Don't tell me nothing about America. Right. I'm 90 years old. I know what we got here. Hello. I know what we got. Right. We got nothing but greed. Greed is what's keeping us in these goddamn ghettos. Keeping us down. Give us a break. Let us get up there and do the things we want to do. When you get, when we get high, every time we get high, we are burned down. That's the one where we were doing our things ourselves in the Harlem and with that. But the system, turn it makes you fight and want to do it. Just fight back. And if that's the only way you can find to do it, I know I grew up in Harlem. And I see what was going on. I see, I know the riots that they were going, they call them riots. They weren't riots. They were revolutions. They were, they were uprisings. They were uprisings. That's all they were. We got to stay, and it's not gonna, they're trying to, they're trying to bring back, like Trump says, the good old days. I was in them damn good old days, and wasn't nothing good about them. We just got to keep fighting. We can't ever stop fighting. This is a lifelong job. It's a lifelong job. But if you're for the right, you got to keep fighting. You got to stay up. You got to keep it going. Because evil, the devil, Satan, and all of them are running the country. They're running the world now. Satan is running this world. I listen to Farrakhan a lot. Every since I'm home now, Bible's up listening, standing, and keeping in the house all the time. I got no cable television. I just got my phone. I listen to this brother, and everything he says, I have seen and I believe this man. He's like God, Jesus to me. You know, I joined the Civil Rights Movement when I came back. I, I joined the Civil Rights Movement because of Jesus Christ. Because I always looked at Jesus as a revolutionary, which he was. And I like that. I like that. That's why I got And he was fighting for good. But now look at our governments. All these governments, they fight for the devil, man. They fight to hurt people. Isn't that free fight to bring people back together? We always talk about we going in these countries to get that. that we are going in these little countries 
we'll start problems in the country and then we'll go and call ourselves the peacekeepers. We don't keep no peace. We go all over the world making mischief. All over the world making devilment. Start stuffing these little countries. We got to wake up to when we all been brainwashed. We've all been brainwashed. Black and white. Everybody. We've been brainwashed. We got we hey look at all the black people out here. None of us got a name. All of us are up Williams. Ain't no Williams in Africa. <laughs> Took all our religion, religion, our freedom to everything. Come on, we got to wake up. We got to just fight harder. I haven't been on no bike in a while. I kind of got rusty. I, I, got, I got a lot of stuff built up in me. <laughs> but, but God is good, boy. God is good. But you just, we got to fight. We just got to keep fighting. You can't stop fighting. You can't keep fighting. You got to have your spirit. You got to have the spirit of good and of truth. See, these people don't want to hear nothing about no truth. They don't want no honesty. No. They don't want that. They want lies. Greed. That's what this world is thing is run on now. Greed. All you got to do is follow the money. Follow the money. We got to wake up, people. I come here out of the I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a veteran. They called me to the eye doctor to get my eyes. Ain't nothing wrong with my eyes now. Call me the eyes, I'll get my eyes examined. They say this left eye had pressure in it. Had a little pressure in my right eye. Now I wasn't having no problem. So they say we're gonna have to give you a la laser thing here. This you put a hole in your lens in order to uh, relieve this thing so it can drain and relieve the pressure. I sat down in that cheap chair very reluctantly. And they said this your girl in there. Look, young girl, kid. And I said, but who's I'm looking for a doctor? She was the doctor. This is the VA. She was the doctor. I sat down in that chair. That woman took that thing. That girl took that thing. Hit my eye with it. I felt electricity go through all my body, go for my eyes, through my feet. I, I screamed and jumped out of the chair and told her, you just ruined my eyes. I felt it go both of my eyes. You felt. They sent a kid in there, she was an intern. Doctors afterwards told me that she should have been there with her to do that, if they were going to do it. This happened about three years ago. Two times I put in a claim for it. They denied my claim. Never had a chance to see no board, no nothing, no nobody. I went to put in the third claim. And the, the, the girl told me, she said, Mr. Williams, she said, they're not gonna. It's the same thing with Agent Orange and the same thing with this new thing that they got now. The people got, it, it, it kept Le, Le, Le Jour, whatever they've been knowing about that water about that stuff there they tell me it was in Fort Dix too now I was in Fort Dix but uh they say this new thing the, the people were complaining about that for years but the government knows about things is wrong with people but we were they rather go overseas and fight some damn war so they can dig up people's minerals and stuff they don't take we don't take care of this own thing we don't take care of the people here we don't take care of the veterans here. You got more homeless veterans out here now. You got, we just got a problem in this country. But the only way we're gonna do is just keep on fighting like we doing, people. That's the only way we can get get get, out, get on these people. Right now, I'm, go, I'm, go, I'm going blind because of the government. I'm, my eyes are messed up because of this government. What happened here? And we going overseas worrying about everybody, what everybody's doing. No, baby, we got to fight. We just got to keep fighting, that's all. I'm running out of breath now. I ain't been out here in a long time. Here, take it. Power to the people. And um, I'm also with the health care working group of the Black is Back Coalition. I didn't know that was going on about you, but we will stand behind you and fight. Because they're going to do what they're supposed to do. So, I will be in touch with you. 
but we're going to get behind you with this. And thank you so much for sharing this. Um, reminds me of my brother last year, as some of you might know, um, my brother's life was taken from him last year. I went to the hospital with him because that's one of the things I like to do. And we have a medical system that just believes in using some of the most brutal, brutal procedures. But they insisted upon putting him on a respirator. I didn't think he needed it. He was talking and up and everything like that. And, you know, he was having difficulty walking and all that. But they insisted upon it. And I said to them, can't you try turning him over on his side? Which this woman, I don't even want to call her a woman, female, whatever you want to call her, basically barked at me and said, I'm here practicing medicine. I guess she thought I was ordering McDonald's or something because I knew where I was. And it was a reasonable suggestion to just try turning him over on his side. You know, that might help. And he had, we were only in the emergency room, not even two hours. But when she, she barked that at me, and then the next thing she knows, she wheeled in, I guess, to put him on a ventilator. And he let out two curdling screams and died. Yeah, he died. And I mean, that was just so really hard, you know, and, and, and devastating for me, but I said I gotta, I gotta fuel that to, as part of my fight and fight against these brutal systems, so, Brother Nat, I hear you, and um, we will stand with you as the healthcare working group, as we have done before, they're gonna recognize, we did that with Sister Ellen, some other comrades, and we will do it again, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. And also, I just want to share, and I appreciate you all being out here, and it's good for us to sometimes just be able to talk and tell some things, because when you were talking about Korea, I have two of my family members, my uncle and my father's cousin, were in World War II fighting against the Nazis and the horrible things that were going on there. But be very clear about this that the United States sided with the Nazis when it came to how black people were being treated. These people, they told, they never boasted about being in that war and then what would end up being the last year of their lives when one was in 80, the other one was 70 something, they began talking about it. And I never heard them say these things before because they never bragged about being in that war. But one of my father's cousins told me that in New Jersey, German prisoners of war will be served in restaurants and in places that black people were not allowed to go into in New Jersey. And as a black soldier, he couldn't go into them. He talked about how when they got to the Mason-Dixie County line, whatever they call that line, how they made black soldiers stand as they were being about to go send them into Germany. He fought in the Battle of the Bulge. He was there, so he saw warfare. But he said Florida was a hellhole for him. And many times he wanted to go AWOL because of the horrible ways in which this country treated black soldiers. I'm not proud of that at all. And while I do disagree with what Hitler did, ain't no black person should have been in that. Well, I'll say it anywhere. When you were treated like this, my uncle was in the war. And his wife told me, he was in the Navy, that his submarine was in trouble. They radioed for help. And that white soldiers in the U.S. ignored them. This submarine was in trouble, and that it was the British who answered their call. He also told me how he volunteered to go on some very dangerous missions, he never got paid. And then when he got out of the service, he did want to become a police officer. I'm glad he did not become that, but he wanted to become one in Massachusetts. This was not in the South. This was in New Jersey and Massachusetts, where these people live. And in Massachusetts, they told him, we ain't hiring black people. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what you get when you're a veteran. Black people fighting for a country that has no respect for you or anybody. But anyway, <laughs> I just had to say that I appreciate the opportunity for being able to say that. The next uh, 
person that we're going to have come up and speak, David Hungerford, a longtime anti-war activist. He's also written a couple of books. He's been a longtime uh, uh, member of the community. David Hungerford. Okay, like, thank you for that very kind introduction, Lisa. Um, and, um, you know, uh, the, where to start? There's so much to say. Uh, people have been talking about so much. Uh, Lisa was bringing up, uh, you know, uh, medical care in the hospitals. We've got a medical care system where, you know, the, uh, the profit motive takes precedence over human life. Now those ventilators, they kill you 80% of the time. They know that perfectly well. So why would they put you on the ventilator when they know it's likely going to kill? Because then they can sell your organs. Seriously, uh, you know, I know people, you know, had to fight tooth and nail to get out of that situation. Um, we've got this uh, so-called COVID situation, and they're pushing all these vaccines on people. Those vaccines are not safe. They're not, uh, you know, they're not effective, except for one thing. Uh, Pfizer has made $70 billion selling those vaccines. That's what they're effective for. And, um, you know, uh, vaccination, that's got uh, quite a long history. It used to be, you know, um, a child would get born and, uh, you know, they would develop an immune system uh, naturally. And now, uh, you know, it's become the case that more and more they vaccinate infants uh, at birth, uh, starting off like half a dozen vaccinations in the 70s and so forth. And, um, you know, at the same time, the more, you know, now it's like 60 vaccinations, not even counting uh, this, this uh, you know, um, poison, so-called uh, COVID vaccines. And the rate of autism, you know, um, Back in 1960, it was something like one in 10,000. And the rate of autism in newborns today, given all of this crazy vaccination, it, it correlates very closely. The more vaccinations, the more frequent autism becomes, and it's up to an absolutely horrifying level of around uh, one in uh, 36 overall, and it's something like one uh, in 30 for uh, male infants. So here they're, you know, they're literally destroying the lives of children at birth and why? To make money. So the problem is this capitalist system itself, it's become, you know, it has literally become, uh, the country has become literally too powerful, too, too, too profitable, too wealthy, too productive to continue anymore much longer, I should say, as a capitalist country. Capitalism is literally destroying itself. And I want to leave you on a uh, positive note here. I don't think, you know, I think that in 20 to 30 years, the United States will no longer be a capitalist country. So how are we going to get there from here? Well, just let me bounce this thought. Uh, how's the, how does the Constitutional Workers' Party sound to you? That sound like a good idea? Because we don't have a constitution anymore. You know, there's no right to privacy. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's no right to free speech. You can be locked up for saying the wrong thing. There, you know, the, the bourgeoisie have abandoned their own constitution. So we got to take that up. We got to restore the constitutional rights. We got to fight for that. It's got to be under the, you know, if, if the bourgeoisie can, can't maintain their own constitution, then it's the working class that's got to take that task up. So anyway, revolution. but revolution, that's right, revolution is the only solution. I mean, here we've got a medical care system, like I say, its first object is making money, not making people healthy. Um, we've got an uh, electoral system that doesn't function anymore, uh, you know, elections are just rigged. Uh, you know, mail-in ballots and all this stuff. Um, 
you know, uh, who gets to be president is who the bankers want to be president. That's who. And I you know we we don't have anything to do with it really. So you know what changes this? The working class changes this. We've got to have a constitutional worker party to you know um, get their constitution back and fight for the elimination of capitalism, its uh, abolition, and a new society where the only reason to create food is so people will have enough to eat. The only reason to build houses is that if people have some place to live, the only way to reason to practice medicine is to uh, so people will be healthy. And that's the only way forward. And I think, uh, like I say, that, um, you know, at the outside, I don't think, uh, you know, in 20 to 30 years, this is no longer going to be a capitalist country. The, the uh, crisis of capitalism is really just that deep. Thank you. Again, I want to thank everybody for coming. Is there anybody else who wanted to speak, want to say something? Anyone else? I want to just thank, I see we have some representation from Black Alliance for Peace, although the person prefers, you know, not to, they just wanted to show up for support, but if they would like to say something, they're more than welcome. But I just want to say, I want to show that sign, Black, Black Alliance for Peace, a powerful uh, organization and if you are not familiar with the Black Alliance for Peace you should become familiar with them and I will tell anybody black in this country well really anybody but certainly anybody black when I heard of uh, 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 brother uh, Shaka speaking and uh, he was talking before about how many of us are afraid what where the power has always lied for us, especially for black people, brown people, is in us. We never voted any kind of change in. Change never happened by voting for it. It never got voted in. It happened when the people came together. It happened because of the vision, the visionaries, the revolutionaries who were on the ground kicking ass in whatever way they could. Chattel slavery ended not because the North and the South said, oh my God, this is so wrong. You got to vote to end this. No, 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 no. It didn't end like that at all. It ended because African people, they identified themselves as African. We need to know that. But enslaved African people and even the ones who got their quote-unquote freedom, they fought to end it. They rose up. There were so many rebellions going on long before the so-called Civil War. And it wasn't about saving the Union. It was about fighting to end oppression for black people. And by the way, the North would have lost that war. Had you not had all these revolutionary African people fighting and they were fearless. But that's what ended chattel slavery, not because Lincoln and the North decided they wanted it to end. And we need to understand these things. We need to understand any kind, any kind of change has happened. It happened because we, the people, got together against all odds. All of them. But anyway, does any, would anybody else like to say anything? Uh, Sister VJ or uh, Steve Bernhop? I know, I know this um, brother, Tyrone Lockett, often does not like, he's so, he's so, he's so humble, but he's such a fearless revolutionary. He's such a fearless, boots on the ground revolutionary. And I must say, Brother Tyrone, thank you so much. And if you would like to say a few words, we'd love to hear from you. But you know me. <laughs> I, I ain't going to put anybody on the spot. You know me. We, we, we. But, um, I, proud of the people. You want to, you want to, a few words, Tyrone? No, I said, he's all right. He's all right. Um, I so appreciate everybody who came out here. And I also so appreciate, and I learned this when I was on the board of WBAI, that, Many times there are people who have all kinds of uh, struggles, all kinds of realities, 
and sometimes they get ignored. And those are people who have various, uh, Tyrone said it's all right to say disabilities. I like to be very respectful. But people have various physical challenges. Many times we don't see them. So I was so appreciative that Brother Nat came out here. I was so glad you did. You have powerful words, but I want people to see this is a movement where we need to hear everybody and these people around here no matter what. No matter. And Tyrone has always inspired me. And I'll just say this real quickly, real quick. And the time, because you see how he just comes around. You, you're like, oh, hi, Tyrone. And you don't even, you're like, oh, because he's just like, oh, standing up all the time. But one time, for, in the Puerto Rican Day Parade when Oscar Lopez Rivera was um, released. And so we walked 41 blocks in the hot sun with Tyrone. And then I turned around and I'm like, Tyrone? <laughs> and it's the first time I really saw because he just makes it so, and then he, I mean, he stays, and I'm always saying Tyrone, he stays in such great shape, I'm always saying I think he should blog more about his journey because he can inspire so many people, and I'm happy to say that when I have assisted people who were facing amputations and all of that, I was able to call Brother Tyrone because he works a lot with um, uh, the um, uh, people with disabilities and organizations, so we are so appreciative, and he's still out here. Again, brothers and sisters, I think we are about to conclude. Does anybody have anything else they would like to say? Anything? I want to make sure I, everybody is recognized. Again, thank you so much. But as you know, we are out here because this is kind of symbolic. It's kind of symbolic. Some people say that, oh, people just get out here and march and then that's it. No, 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 no. This is not an end at all. This is the clarion call, the call to the community, the chance for us to come together to be reconnected, also to send messages, to let the feds know we are not afraid, we are organizing, we are coming stronger, but the work begins even more once we leave. That's where it counts. That's where we're gonna make it matter. I'm gonna ask everybody, please, take pictures of these QR codes. And also, if you want to join the Black is Back Coalition, we are a coalition of organizations, a coalition of black organizations dedicated to the liberation of our people. We have, you know, might have different ideologies, but we are unified in the firm belief that we must be free, we must have liberation. And there are other organizations that affiliated like with the Uhuru movement, one of them the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, an organization of people who happen to be white who said, we don't want this shit no more. We don't want this legacy any longer. We're going to fight against it. Colonialism is wrong and people must be free and they fight under the leadership of the African People Socialist Party. But please, um, if you also want to be involved with the Hands Off Uhuru campaign, let me just make this distinction. I am the vice chair of the Black is Back Coalition, but there is the Hands Off the Uhuru Movement co Campaign, which is a coalition of people all, all different backgrounds and everything, uh, nationalities, and if you want to work with the Hands Off Uhuru Campaign to condemn strongly what the hell the United States government did and they said, we are not going to have this FBI repression and all of that, Please go to uh, www.uhuru.handsoffuhuru.org. Uh, but again, if you scan in these QR codes, they will take you to that. Um, November 5th, we are going to be in D.C. It's imperative. We have our annual march on the White House, the Black People's March on the White House. We have it. We chose deliberately November, right around the time of elections, to give strong messages to whomever gets in the in the White Houses or whatever the seat of power is, that we're coming for them, but we're not afraid. Um, so we are organizing, we're in the process of organizing buses or a bus from Newark. We are working on that hard, and we will be in touch with people, but November 5th, Washington, D.C., also on Monday, there's going to be an organizing call for people who are interested in the Hands Off the Uhuru campaign, which is different from the Black is Back Coalition, just to be clear somewhat. And again, um, 
We thank you so much. By the way, the Black Alliance for Peace is one of the coalition members of the Black is Back Coalition, so I just have to again shout out my comrades. But this was so important. We appreciate everybody coming here. Thank you so much. And um, I'm so glad that we did it in front of this house of ill repute. <laughs> I really hate, if you notice, in front of all of these federal buildings and everything, they got statues of Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks where so much damn corruption happens. And they're going to put their names and their faces on it. They don't represent nothing that King was about or anything that Rosa Parks was about. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, but they got their statues and their faces and everything all up in there. So again, um, if no one else has anything they want to say going once, going twice, <laughs> I give the longest goodbyes. <laughs> you should see me on the phone. At least 20 minutes of it is I gotta go. But again, thank you everybody. Um, Power to the people! Hands off the Uhura movement! Hands off the Uhura movement! Hands off the Uhura movement! In these wars, abolish Africa! You guys get the fuck out of Africa! I gotta just say it like that because I've also been hanging around Pam Africa as well because I love how she talks. But um, get out! Oh, just lastly, um, right before. Russia went into Ukraine. Two days before Russia went into the Ukraine, the United States bombed Somalia, like, you know, like for the fifth time or so. But now, uh, and also they're back in Somalia. Then I don't even know. I mean, they're just all over the place. But now, they're talking about the Wisconsin National Guard. They're going to be sending them into the Horn of Africa. The Horn of Africa, they're sending in the Wisconsin National Guard. And because of, well, Barack Hussein Obama helped to bring this, deliver this, but Africa, I think, has 54 countries, and there's like uh, U.S. military bases in like 53 of them or something. And in fact, the United States has over 800 military bases throughout the world, which is kind of like occupying those countries throughout the world. Imagine if Russia had a military base right across the street from us. Imagine that. Oh yes, please do, please, yeah. This is news just in today, just in today, that Biden is going to the UN Security Council to get authority for a multinational so-called peacekeeping force, including the United States, to go in and take over and occupy Haiti because the Haitian people are in the streets by the thousands. Demand and democracy that they fought for centuries for. And they have a, a constitution that is being violated. And the people are demanding affordable fuel so they can survive. And they have, the popular movements have a different idea of what democracy is to what the United States and the international forces. And we all know when you win, and the United States sends troops into Haiti, they bring cholera, they bring rape, they bring murder and repression. And it's a very important moment as we look at, and Black Alliance for Peace is one of the forefront groups that has opposed the U.S. policy in Haiti and fought for true democracy in Haiti. We need to be on our tippy toes right now. Because the Haitian people know how to fight, and they're going to fight with their lives like they always have. Right now, today, CNN, you look it up, it's right on the front page. Biden's going to the U.N. Security Council for a multinational force to take over and occupy Haiti. They're not putting it that way. They're not putting it that way. Now, United the the, the, the the predecessor of this is the United States was not allowing the Haitian people and was supporting the former dictator who was trying to, uh, to return to voyeurism to Haiti by extending his term in violation of the Constitution. He ends up getting assassinated by a team of a whole bunch of Colombians and that still hasn't been explained. 
you know, why were the Colombians used in this operation to murder the the president that the United States was supporting, the, the fake president they, who was extending his term. The people were already demanding democracy. Then they got this interim situation, and the people are demanding an end to the repression, real democracy, and to stop being uh, gouged with the with the the fuel hikes, and because the United States wants to control the outcome, is right now before the UN Security Council to work out a deal with the United States and its favored partners in imperialism to go in and stabilize Haiti and install a government that will not work with, for the people but will work for multinational capital to keep Haiti as a under its plunder. Anyway, this is a a tremendous thing we need to keep an eye on and we need to be prepared. We, we may need to organize another one of these demonstrations within a week or so to demand U.S. hands off Haiti. All right, that's all I want to say. Also, I just want to say, yes, we stand with Haiti and the revolution of the Haitian people who overthrew the freaking colonizer in Haiti and gained their independence. And you know what happened when they won, when they kicked Napoleon's ass? You know what happened to them? The United States and all these European governments got together and made this a reparation to France. Give that money back, friends. Give that money back and more. We say reparations now. Reparations that we want it, you owe it, and we're going to get it. We're going to get it, and we stand with the revolutionary people of Haiti. And I just want to say that um, last year, myself, uh, Bob, and some other New Jersey um, anti-war activists, Madeline Hoffman, we have begun doing a monthly anti-war demonstration and protest. I'm going to put it out there. I think we need that to go on, to continue. We need to be out here more regularly, monthly, because they're not stopping. It feels like, what are they talking about, 12 o'clock? It feels almost like quarter to 12. That hour, that very dangerous hour, and nuclear war, nuclear, they literally have the audacity to put out a, a stupid ass, just the stupidest thing ever. The more powerful they get, the more ass out stupid they become because they put out a PSA about what to do in case of a nuclear attack. And the background of it was uh, just regular buildings like this, and maybe you saw a little bit of smoke on some of the buildings. And they told you things that will go inside. Like, if we see bombs exploding over there, we're not going to try to run and get out of the way. But go inside and don't do that. And it was just so, like, oh, nonchalant and everything. And it just goes to show the level of ignorance that they try to get people in this country to operate under. And I think they've been relatively effective, I have to say that. And how, they, and how they think they can talk down to us, which they do. I think they've been relatively effective with doing that. But it goes to show the level of work that we must do, because um, this is really serious. And to, we should not be, even be talking about the possibility of nuclear war. And we got a maniac in the White House. Maniacs. So um, anyway, again, thank you. Uh, we will be in touch. We. Uh, Anybody else think that we should have these, continue with these uh, anti-war demonstrations monthly? I think we got to really get back to them. Anybody here agrees with that? Yeah. Sure. All right. All right. No matter what, we got to do it. And again, let me just also just give a shout out to UNAP. They did call for uh, national protests, a week of national protests to end these wars. But we got to keep it up. We got to keep it going. Also, one last thing I will say, this will be the last thing. We know about COINTELPRO, and I just learned this history like two days ago. This just goes to show how we got to get connected with what did happen. Because COINTELPRO, we found out about it was when some anti-war activists broke into the offices of the FBI. They said, we are tired of what's going on, and this was over the Vietnam War, because there ain't no way you were going to have any elections being run, and people think that they could not take a stance against the Vietnam War. But... They broke into the offices of the FBI. They said they got to rev this moving movement up, and that's what they did. And they were able to get all these files. They took them, and so that's how we know about COINTELPRO officially. Again, everybody, thank you so very much for coming. We're going to win this. We're going to take, take this back. Thank you.